Welcome back to the show as well. Uh, we mentioned earlier that it will be, uh, well, today marks the 50th uh, anniversary you know, of the overthrow of, of uh, Dr. Uh, Kwame Nkrumah, Nkrumah. Ghana's first and, um, president. And yeah, the people will hold a ceremony today at the Kwame Nkrumah Museum and uh, we'll have the chairman of the party, Professor Edmund Dele, uh, to talk to about, you know, what the day means. A lot uh, has changed as well. And uh, is the change positive? or negative. Are they proud of where the CPP is today? Good morning to you, sir, and thank you very much for joining us. Hello, sir. Uh, good morning. All right, we'll try and connect. Uh, you can also, already on Facebook, we've already given you the opportunity to share your thoughts with us as well. Uh, I understand we have him back on the line. Good morning to you, Prof. Good morning. Yes. Um, what does today mean for you as an incromised? Of course, for us, it's, it's a day of shame and it's a day of mourning. All right, I cannot hear Prof uh, in the studio, but I can yes. hear him in the control room. And so we'll try and then connect uh, with him as well and work on the floor sound here so we can have a, a fruitful conversation with him as well. But there was a report by the ABC and on how, you know, Ghana being the first sub-Saharan African country to uh, regain independence. And 50 years on, what has changed? And um, they have a, an extensive report on it. Um, all right, we'll try and talk to Dr. Uh, Prof as well. Prof, Prof Edmund Dele, sorry about this. Good morning to you again. Good morning. Yes, it's better. It's better now. Thank you so much. Um, first of all, what does today mean to you? As far as personally, I'm, uh, personally, my personal experience is a very, it's a day of mourning. Okay. Because the day we heard of uh, the overthrow of Osage Food, Dr. Kwame Tuma. I was then studying medicine at the University of Padua. Okay. And when the announcement came that Ghana, there was a coup d'etat in Ghana, I said, no, it cannot be Ghana. It must be Uganda and not Ghana. Mm. Then after about an hour or so, finally it dawned on me that uh, it was our, our own party, the CPT government, which was overthrown, and our great leader and founder of Ghana was that for Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. So what quickly came to my mind is that why, why a coup d'etat when Ghana was poised to achieve economic independence and when Ghana was actually supporting many African countries to become independent and forced together as a united Africa so that we could change the lives of many millions of, of Ghanaians and Africans and even people of African descent all over the world. For, for me, even young as I was, it, it, I quivered. I, I, I felt so sad. And okay. I couldn't eat the whole day. Because at that time, all the other African students who were with me, the Ugandans, the Nigerians, the Tanzanians, they were always saying that, look, we are all Ghanaians. Okay. We all love your president. And we are praying that we wish we had presidents like Osage Dr. Kwame Kuma. Okay. So for me, Personally, it was a sad day. Okay, we'll get to. We'll, 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 okay, was, go on and tell me about the party. What it means for the party? Oh, as for the party, you can see that it was a day of destruction of the Convention People's Party, a party which was known all over the world as the fighter for the freedom of the oppressed, a fighter for the liberation of Africa from the chains of colonialism, milk, and so forth. So for the party, it was a sad day, and it has affected us. In fact, it is the, the African party, which has been tortured more than any party in the history of, of Africa. You okay. know, CPT was immediately disbanded, and members of the, the party members were locked in jail, some for three, four years, some were maimed while they were there, and some were destroyed, and it affected the party for okay. a very, very long time. And right. to some extent, we are still feeling the, the, that destruction in the Convention People's Party. We tried to pick up in 1979 by forming the PNP and won election, and that gave us a ray of hope. And then again, our fortunes began to build in again. But now, I can assure you that we are inspired by this message that 
15 years is a long time for a party. And despite the difficulties that we have in this party, we are confident that reflecting on our achievements, on the foundation of Ghana, and then also reflecting on our shortcomings, I think it's a signal that we are going to mourn. Okay. But we are also going to rejoice that CP2 will never die. Okay. The CP2 will come again as a vibrant party and will build up from the scratches. And if it capable, will be capable of winning elections in this country. Again. Okay. Um, and that dawn of a new day will be Ivor Green Street, who is now oh, your flag bearer? Of course. <laughs> yes. Because incidentally, it's 50 years old this year. And so we think that even it's a miracle. And again, you see, never in the history of, of, of Africa did we get somebody elected as a president who is a disabled person. And I'm telling you that even the slogan was created for us that his brothers and sisters who are disabled, they said we should go. If it brings it, total victory. If it brings it, total victory. If it brings it, total victory. So actually, a new dawn has come to the city. Okay. And uh, the light has now been lit. Okay. And nothing will, will, will happen to bring that light. We are all marching towards victory this time, calling each other hand in hand and prepared to make any sacrifice to make sure that what they intended to do to destroy this party. They haven't succeeded and they will not succeed. All right. Uh, Prof, but you talk about it, but it's uh, those... That light, individual Ivor Green Street is just one. But you'd have to reconcile uh, the differences. You know, you have Dr. Abu Sakara, Dr. Papakwe Sinu, who left the party. Samia Nkuma already has issues with the party. So what steps, in trying to say that, yes, the light, you've not dimmed the light, the light will still continue to shine. But what steps or practical steps are you taking to reconcile the individuals who have differences within the party, one, and also other parties who also share in the Nkumaist uh, vision? <laughs> In fact, I've come up with my program of homecoming and reconciliation. Okay. Homecoming and approved by the Central Committee of the Party. That all those who, for one reason or the other, left the CTP to join NPT or NDC, we are telling them to come home. And that is the greatest honor they can do to the memory of Osajifo Dr. Kwame Kuma and the overthrow of his government. And then reconciliation. Those people who probably were head of Said they were mishandled by the party. Our doors are open. They should come and let us talk and find a way of reconciling. And if there are two improvements, I think this is the time. Okay. It's a clarion call of duty for all who love uh, the party and love Ghana to come forward and let us move together. It is a family. In fact, we call ourselves comrades. It might look like a queer name and they sometimes describe us as, as, as uh, communists. But very happy about it because CTT is a family more than only a political uh, party it's a family and you know in family when you have problems you don't go out and then tell the public we sit down on a round table and then we try to solve them and that is what we call in the CTT democratic centralism that we sit down and when a decision is taken like a man uh, an army marching for victory we all get up and follow our leader so I can assure you that the Council of Elders are with me, and we are doing all our things to bring about peace. And we are going to sound that message today. Okay, that all uh, members prof, of the CPC prof, should come in. Prof, yes. what format will it take? Because you're saying your doors are open to them. They are supposed to come. Are you going to reach out to them? What format will well, it what take? What I'm saying is that there are two sets of people. Those who are outside, we will go to them. Because that okay. is what we have been taught as improvements, that you don't sit at your desk and invite people. We believe in grassroots campaign, and we believe, and I walk from house to house to those people who are disgruntled, and I go there and talk to them and tell them that, please, let me know what is wrong. And I can assure you that people who were not in, when I went to the Volta region, some people who were staying in their houses for the past 10, 15 years are back to their party. Every people, even coming with our walking sticks and say that we are happy now that you have decided together with your council of elders that this party must move forward. So we are not waiting for them to come. We will okay. go to them. All right. And Prof, um, if you say you are in Chroma in 2016, what does it mean? And if you say you subscribe to the ideologies of Nkuma, what are those? And, no, and how does that sit with the development now? 
No, it's, it's very simple. In fact, people wonder why we are so... Uh, uh, the ideology is very simple. Self-determination. Mm -hmm. Self-discipline or self-reliance. Rely on our own strengths okay. and then try to build. And then, of course, we are talking about social justice. That means you don't think only of yourself or those who are well to do. Okay. But think of the our ordinary brothers and sisters who are suffering, the disabled, the women whose rights are sometimes violated. These are the types of people we are looking at. And we want to bring them on board. And we really believe in grassroots campaign. Let them be part of the democratic process. In fact, that's what we strength. That is why he was able to win a lot of us. And bring, so we are going to change our mode of, of campaign. We are okay. going back to the drawing board, as they say, and go back to where we are strong enough. We are strong on the ground. We go, and that was the method, the miracle that the Green used used to win the election. He went to the people. You will never hear him talking in the media about his campaign. He was on the ground with the people, talking to them, listening to them, won their hearts, and that, and we are going to do that. And of course, don't forget about our famous food. The independence of Ghana is meaningless unless it's linked with the total liberation of the African continent. That okay. is pan-Africanism. You have seen that we are surrounded by nations which have had war and some of them have still had war. Is it for the good of, of the continent? And most of the leaders who didn't agree with Kwame Nkrumah before their death, Yerere was one. He came and told us that okay. Nkrumah right. was right. He was wrong, and now we are struggling with sub-regional organizations and this. And of course, I'm happy that the OAU, now the Organization of African Unity, have made it clear that Kwame Nkrumah was the greatest architect, architect yeah. of African Unity. And that is why his statue has been put at Aziz Baba, so that the whole world will see that okay. this man has been recognized for what he stood for and for which he died. All but right. Africa alone, one Ghana alone cannot survive as, as a nation and be strong enough unless we unite our forces together. Okay. So, so Prof, it's amazing, it's very simple. Yes. Prof, uh, before you go, if I am to ask you this, that uh, 50 years on, what is the biggest or the greatest achievement of the CPP? What would it be? No, for me, if that's me, what is the greatest achievement of the city? I mean, post Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. No, what I'm saying is that, for me, it takes me of the mindset of the Ghanaian and the African. Okay. That is what we are trying. But that is our greatest problem in Africa, in Ghana, and in diaspora. Our mindset. That is, for me, that is the great thing. You find anybody who is a true improvement. He has a mindset which is different from the others. We believe in ourselves. We are confident that we are capable of solving our own problems. We will mm -hmm. be making mistakes, but we should be able to correct them. Otherwise, I imagine 73 years as a man, I okay. still have that idea that I am here to serve my people. All right. I am here to see that Ghana is a united country. I am here to do selfless service to the less fortunate one. And so, for me, he, he, whatever people say, as for radios and schools and this, that's but what he, what he put in our mind, and that will survive. And his greatest work that year, Africa might unite, consciousness, and so This is what is going to stay long after all of us are gone. All right. Thank it you. That philosophy. Have all a right. great day. And God bless you. All right. Professor Edmund Delig, thank you very much for joining us this morning. He is a chairman for the Conventional People's Party. And uh, this morning, they will be at the Kwame Nkrumah Museum. They will lay a wreath there and also reflect on what he stood for and what more the CPP can do to become the third active, vibrant threat or threat to the main political party, the two main political parties, that's the NDC and NPP.